Linux, someone loves, someone hates. In this video, I'm going to give you my two cents about Linux after using it exclusively for four years. So you can decide if you want to dip your toes into this river. Let's begin. As you know, I'm a Linux lover. I want to get the bad things out of the way first so that we can focus on the good. The first issue is loneliness. Using Linux feels lonely in real life. I'm grateful for all the open source developers contributing all the great solutions for us to stay away from the evil corporations. And I'm also grateful for all of you guys watching and subscribing. But in real life, I still haven't found a single companion to share my love for Linux on a daily basis. On top of that, I have to learn to shut up about it among my developer friends. From 2012, when I started my Linux journey until now, I have only seen two true Linux lovers in real life, but both of them have left my social circle by moving to other countries. Even though I have a girlfriend, the only open source tool I successfully forced onto her is Bitwarden. And even after that, she still writes some password on the iOS Note app because she lost faith in Joplin after losing all her nodes with a self-conducted migration without my supervision. I stopped convincing her to follow my passion ever since. My best friends, the first and second subscribers of my channel, might not watch every single one of my videos or even understand everything I have said here, but I don't blame them or dare to ask them to keep watching my video. This is just reality of Linux. It has a proper amount of users, but compared to the other in the market, it's still a niche. The second downside of using Linux is the gear support. I bet the majority of Linux users share a common love for electronics. Ever since I started the journey of YouTube, I've been having trouble updating my camera and lens. My company blocks all the USB functions on those Mac machines they forced me to use, and the camera companies couldn't be bothered to provide a way to update their gears using Linux, which means I need to study thoroughly or be ready to compromise before buying each piece of my new gear. And most of the time, I compromise. The perfect example here is that after starting editing on the M1 chip, I just can't go back to x86 now. And if I want to get a personal Mac workstation and use Linux on it, I'll probably have to get an M1 chip for better usability than M2, according to Asahi Linux page. The final obstacle is debugging and solving issues. After trying to make my father and my girlfriend use Linux, I realized the issue most people face with Linux are not customization or drivers because modern desktop environments are already following the similar design pattern to be user-friendly, and Linux has become miles ahead on supporting hardware. The most common issue I got from them are how to change brightness, resolution, and whether they can close the laptop lid while using an external monitor. And when it comes to Googling stuff, because they don't know the modularity nature of the Linux distributions. They will expect to solve a setting issue in minutes only to find that all the results are more or less related to Ubuntu, or the solution requires them to type in something in terminal, which is either too scary or non-functional. All right, now these are the pain points I can think of for people who use Linux. If none of them have scared you yet, let's talk about the strengths of Linux. The very first one is stability. After quitting Windows for four years, I've never run into an issue with gaming after it's properly set up or blue screen. If you have watched this video or this video, after setting up the Pure Fedora for gaming on this external SSD six months ago and Sunshine Moonlight combo recently with my Nvidia Shield TV Pro as the client, I haven't seen a system crash once. My girlfriend and I have played It Takes Two on TV for a long enough time that we already beat the Space Monkey now. Apart from a few hiccups during the cutscene, which might be the result of the USB 3.0 speed or the encoding power of the mobile version GTX 1660 Ti on my laptop, nothing else had interrupted our bonding sessions. Next is the performance. 
I was surprised that the average FPS differs so little after running the benchmark in Red Dead Redemption 2 in my last video when comparing the pure Fedora to the stripped down performing Windows. Bear in mind that the whole Linux system was running on an external SSD while the Windows was on native NVMe. I have more videos coming in benchmarking games, so stay tuned if you're interested. Now let's talk about the two common free stuff that always come with open source concepts, price and freedom. Six years ago, after building my gaming desktop, I paid $100 for a legal version of Windows Home. And two years after that, I decided to sell my stack and keep the Windows copy. But somehow it was extremely sticky to the motherboard. I follow many suggestions online, officials or not, but whenever I rebooted the machine, Windows said it was activated. Then I called their customer services. After spending five hours hopping through several Microsoft representatives, they told me to dispute the charge with my credit card company in the end. Yes, you heard it right. That was the final solution Microsoft can officially suggest to me. And that is when I decided to make my switch to Linux. Since then, I haven't spent a penny on an operating system and couldn't be happier. The second free stuff is freedom. This is the core of free software. With Linux, I can do whatever I want to the system because the user has the freedom to do so. I can keep my gaming data along with the whole system on an external hard drive. I can customize the desktop to look however I want. I can completely change the desktop to another without reinstalling the whole system if I get bored. I can even try to make a profit on YouTube by talking about them. And this is only a tip of an iceberg. In Linux, you can change almost anything if you feel like to do so. And the rabbit hole goes as deep as you dare. Finally, let's talk about the ease of use. I know it might be a little controversial to put it here. But the point I'm trying to make is that as long as you have the proper hardware, you don't have to configure anything. All the drivers are shipped with a kernel. If you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, you are done as soon as the system finishes the installation with the initial update. And speaking of the NVIDIA driver, it is so easy to install nowadays that my very first video of this channel as a YouTube newbie was to test how long does it take to install the proprietary driver on different major distributions. Not to mention things like Ventoy and Flathub. It seems that Linux is getting easier to use by the days with so many smart people getting involved in the development process. That's all for this video. Thank you again to all the open source developers out there and you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.